Hi everybody, it's Nick from Astro Exploring here. Today I'm going to show you how to stack deep sky astrophotography images in PixInsight. And to do that, we're going to use something called uh, weighted batch pre-processing, uh, which I will refer to as WBPP throughout the video because that's much easier and quicker to say. Now, before I show you how to input all of your light frames and start the stacking process, I wanted to show you some individual images and just why the stacking process is so important for anybody new out there to astrophotography that may be questioning the, the value of it. So on the left hand side here, I know it's in, in grayscale, but what we've got here is one, um, a five minute exposure of the California Nebula. Um, so you can see that um, there's you know a reasonable amount of detail for one five minute picture, uh, but it's not a huge amount of detail there. It's very grainy. That's because there's um, some noise in the image, and um, using the the screen transfer function down here to um, apply uh, a quite an aggressive curve stretch to the picture, uh, it, it it becomes quite uh, quite grainy. So that is just one individual sub. The image in the middle is the output from stacking all of these individual files together. So this image has had absolutely nothing done to it any differently than the individual sub. All I've done is taken the um, saved stack file and um, applied the screen transfer auto stretch to it. That is it. I haven't done anything else to it. So you can see already the power of stacking your images. This is a lot cleaner. There's a lot more detail in it. And you can then go on to process uh, your astrophotography images to something like you can see on the right hand side here, um, which is my sort of final um, stacked uh, and processed image of the California Nebula. So you can see, you know, we started there on, on the left with an individual image file and we finished over there on the right hand side. So how do we get to that? Let me um, load up weighted uh, batch pre-processing and you don't get to it by a workspace. You get to it by clicking on script, batch processing, weighted batch pre-processing. So this is what WBPP looks like in PixInsight. It looks quite complicated, like lots of things in PixInsight. It may even sound complicated as I'm talking through it, but honestly, it's um, actually quite simple. Once you've done it a few times with the help of, of this video or somebody else's video, um, then actually it becomes um, quite straightforward and, and quite simple to do. There's not a huge amount to change. So we are going to start by selecting um, our light frame. So we'll use the lights button at the bottom there. That might sound quite obvious. Um, and you want to locate your light frames, your image files. I've already got mine um, sort of preloaded here. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of my um, FITS files. Opening those. Um, so you can see we've got 70 light frames uh, at five minutes uh, per light frame. It then inputs some information, you know, right ascension, declination, the focal length and pixel size. And um, WBPP uses that information when it's stacking the images. So um, it is um, very useful that you're able to, to pull the information in from your FITS or um, RAW files. The great thing about WBPP, um, certainly compared to Deep Sky Stacker, and I will make that comparison throughout this video because I think Deep Sky Stacker is probably the one that most people are more familiar with, certainly I'm more familiar with. In comparison to Deep Sky Stacker, WBPP um, will gr automatically group files depending on the filter that you've used. So I'm using a one-shot color camera, the, um, 530, the ZWO 533. Uh, but if you were using a monochromed camera where you're using RGB filters or show filters, you don't need to individually select each filter like you would in um, groups in Deep Sky Stacker. You can just select all of your light frames, uh, no matter what the filter is, and it will group them in the uh, light frame section here. Okay, and next we want to load in our calibration frames. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that uh, people have taken calibration frames. I have a whole video that I'll leave a link down in the description below for about explaining about how to take calibration frames, what they are and why they're important. So I'm not going to go into the detail of that video here. I'm just going to assume that you either have them or don't have them. If you don't have them, you can skip over this section. If you do, then feel free to follow along. So I am going to go to calibration frames, um, demo, flats, and I'm just going to select all of my flat files. So that's all of my flats. And I have also got uh, dark frames for this 
as well. And I've got 11. 11 is a rather random number for calibration frames, but there we go. I've got 11 of those. So that's all of our image files loaded in to PixInsight. That's what I've taken. If you've got um, bias frames as well, then feel free to add those in. Once you've got all your image files loaded into PixInsight, you want to make sure that you've clicked on the Lights tab because we're going to make some adjustments, um, but also just look through um, to show you what, what is in here. Um, for the uh, calibration. For my calibration frames, I leave the image integration sections on the default settings uh, for the simple reason that people that are far smarter than me have decided that uh, these should be the default settings for all images. And I find that they work um, absolutely fine for all of my images. I've not changed any of those. So that's why I do that. But there are a few things that you might want to check out on the light frames. Um, so we'll talk through that as we go through. So the first one to come to is the subframe weighting here. And if you hover over this, it gives you an explanation of what all the different options uh, mean. For this example, I'm gonna use PSF signal weight. I find that that is um, absolutely fine to use. Um, so I'm gonna leave it as the default setting for that. Next, we wanna move down to image registration. If we click into the registration parameters, again, there are all sorts of things um, that you could change in here should you wish to, but I'm just gonna leave those as the default settings again. The asymmetric solution, if we click into that and have a look at some of these settings. So in the astrometric solutions tab, um, you'll see here that there's information about right ascension, declination, focal length, pixel size, etc. You wanna make sure that the force values uh, box isn't checked uh, because what that will do is it will force these default parameters to your image files. Now you can see that we already have all of that information in the image file themselves. So we don't need to input that into uh, these boxes because WBPP will just use the information that's already in the uh, image files themselves. So we don't need to do that, uh, but just a quick check to make sure that false values box isn't ticked. And then we're going to go into normalization parameters. And again, I leave these settings as default. However, if you're um, either more knowledgeable than me or um, are just uh, testing out various things, then there may be some things that you perhaps want to change in there. But for the purposes of this, we'll just leave those as default. And lastly on the uh, lights tab is the image integration. So there's an auto crop button there. If you enable that, then as you're stacking images, if you've been uh, if you've been dithering or if you don't necessarily have a great polar alignment uh, and aren't auto guiding and therefore your uh, images may be slightly out of alignment, then you can get some stacking artifacts from that. Um, and what that means is that around the edges of your images might look um, a little bit dodgy. Uh, now that's not a problem because you can just um, remove those by cropping the master file yourself um, in your post-processing or you can enable this auto crop um, tick box uh, and it will do that for you. Um, again, feel free to test that. For the purposes of this, I'm going to leave that um, ticked because um, I've not had any issues with it cropping too much off of my images. But if you do find that it's cropping quite a bit off your images, um, then you can untick that box uh, and um, just do that yourself manually afterwards. And in the image integration tab, when we're looking at the minimum weight, if I just um, hover over this box, so the, the default value is, is 5%, which represents 5% of the maximum weight in the integrated data set. So, so what that means is if you set that to zero, then it will basically stack every single image um, that you've got. Now, if you have already checked through um, your images um, to look for, um, I don't know, whether it's uh, satellite trails or a, or a plane or, or some clouds or something like that, then you can say, actually, I'm, I'm happy with all of those image files. I just want to stack every single one of them. Um, and that's not a problem at all. Um, by having this minimum uh, default 5%, uh, it will take out some of those images that aren't as good quality as what it chooses as the reference frame. I hope that makes sense. If you're wanting to check your FITS files, raw files is easier because you can just use a, a generic photo viewer on Windows or, or a Mac. Um, but for FITS files, that's a little bit harder, but PixInsight does have a tool called Blink and you can load your FITS files into that and individually look through them. Um, I haven't done that for this purposes because I've processed this image before, so I know that these files are all fine. 
Uh, but if you know that you had intermittent cloud throughout your imaging session, then just go up to process all processes and blink um, and load your individual light frames into, into that. And you can individually flick through those uh, and remove the ones that you don't want uh, to stack in PixInsight. Now we're going to move over to the right hand side and click on this um, presets button. So configuring the, um, the quality for uh, WBPP. So there are three different options maximum quality with no compromises that is obviously the best option that you can choose it also means that it's going to take the longest amount of time to run so if you have a slightly older machine a slightly slower machine um, then you may not want to use that you may want to drop that down to the faster with good quality you're still going to get some uh, really you know a really good quality stack out of it uh, but it will do it more quickly uh, that's also true if you have a lot of individual files, the stacking process takes a lot longer. So if you're stacking, say, you know, 300 one minute files, as opposed to, you know, in my case here, 75 minute files, then um, having those extra files will take longer for the stacking process. For the purposes of this, I'm going to uh, use maximum quality, but um, test this. If it's taking hours and hours, then you may want to quit out uh, and try it with the uh, the faster uh, but still good quality option. And just a word of warning, if you have gone in here, selected a, um, the maximum quality and it's taking too long and you, and you quit out, then uh, when you've selected the uh, good quality, um, it, it will give you an error if you try and stack and you just need to purge the cache uh, in order to be able to run it again. Um, it's a really simple thing to do with this button here. And then finally, we're going to select an output directory. Um, I don't want it to go to my um, Comet um, image directory, but I, I'm just going to stick it um, in here and I'm just going to call that, uh, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm selecting the folder. So I will stick it in the NGC1499 folder because that is where I want it to be. And now don't hit run just yet because we're not quite finished. We're going to now move over to the calibration tab. And this is where you can just check some of the information uh, for your file. So it's going to check that things, um, you know, match to each other. Um, so this is telling me that I've got 11 uh, dark frames, five minute exposures. Uh, and it's telling me that that matches the exposure for my light frames, which um, is, is is great. Um, the flat frames is thrown up an error there. That's telling me that uh, my flat frames aren't the same exposure length as my light frames, and you wouldn't expect to take a five minute flat, so that's not a problem at all. Um, but these 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 checks just you know provide an amount of uh, sanity checking, if you like, if you've got. If your if your file management isn't great, mine's not particularly great, and you've selected um, you know darks from a different camera from a different resolution, then it will throw up an error, and it will it will be obvious in here that you've got an issue, and you can just go back and amend that before you try stacking. Now we'll move over to the post calibration tab again. That's just showing the total integration time, um, the filters, color space, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all of the information that we've we've already got from. Uh, the image file. So I've got just under six hours of um, total integration time. Drizzle is disabled. Now, if you're under sampling, um, then you can enable drizzle and that will provide uh, you know more spherical stars and things like that. It, it's a really powerful tool. I really recommend it, at least uh, testing. It's not going to be right for everybody, but I, I certainly recommend testing it. Um, however, it will also massively increase the amount of time that the stacking process takes. So if you're somebody that's looking to do this really quickly, you don't want to leave that uh, ticked. Uh, or you don't want to tick that rather. If you don't really care how long it takes and you know that you're going to really benefit from um, applying drizzle to your images, then tick that box. Otherwise, leave it blank. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to leave it blank. And now that we have done all of that, we can finally go ahead and hit run. So you can see we've done quite a lot there, but it didn't take too long to do in this tutorial and it is even quicker when you're not having to, to talk through it and explain it so it literally will only take you a couple of minutes to do this is just giving some information uh, about what's going to happen i'm just going to click continue and that is going to start the stacking process so you can see there are various steps um, happening it will tell you what the uh, step that's happening uh, at this time is so that's the uh, integration of the dark frames at the minute 
Um, and it's going to run through all these steps. If you've got a really fast machine, it can be as quick as, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. If you've got a really slow machine, it can literally take hours and hours. So I'm going to pause the video here and come back when we've got the final stack because there are a few things that I want to go through with the final stack as well. All right, so I uh, disappeared off out for a bit and I've come back and you can see that this did take quite a bit of time. So it took just shy of 47 minutes to complete um, stacking 75 minute frames. My laptop is about four years old. Uh, it's fairly decent. It's an i7 processor, 16 gig of RAM and a, a dedicated um, graphics card because I, I use it for a bit of gaming as well. But, um, you know, it's it's not top of the range. Uh, computing has moved on and it's not a, a desktop uh, PC where you'd obviously get uh, a bit more grunt um, but you know it's, it's decent enough and it's completed in 47 minutes so if you've got a more powerful machine it will do it um, faster than that if your machine's lagging behind a bit it will it will take longer uh, but as I said you could use the presets earlier to sort of uh, lower the quality to, to do it faster so now that that has completed what we need to do is go to the folder where we um, had the output um, save to that we selected earlier um, so we can go ahead and exit wbpp now so this is the um the folder um that's actually the file if i just go back up one um you can see um you can ignore a, lo a lot of this this is from when i've stacked the image before and, and various uh, times that i've processed it and um some examples for my website and things like that you can see here that uh, pixinsight has created five folders uh, as part of the um, process these are quite big folders you can see that the the calibrated one is 3.37 gig the next one is 7 gig um, and the logs is quite small because they're just logs but then the registered is 7 gig as well so um, what I, I would do is once you're happy with that just to save on hard drive space unless you're backing it up to a sort of dedicated external drive um, as well uh, and, and have plenty of free space then that's fine but um, really master and logs are the two that you'll want to keep for definite but don't delete any of your data until you know that you're definitely happy with it so in order to find the final stacked image that we want to use for our post-processing you go into the master folder uh, and then there's uh, various options in here as well um, so it's got uh, a master dark frame a master flat frame because of our um, calibration frames and it will have used those to um, subtract the noise from the light frames as it was stacking um, and then we've got um, a final image here and then an auto cropped version because you'll remember that we had that box ticked so uh, the auto crop version is the one that we want to be um, going for so we just want to drag that across into uh, PixInsight go ahead and close that And then you can see by just applying a quick uh, SDF um, auto curve, there's a big green cast over it, et cetera, et cetera. All, all of these things are completely normal use with a one-shot color camera uh, when you're using a narrowband filter. It, it's easily calibrated out, uh, and uh, I can show people how to do that in a, in a different video. Uh, but you can see here, that's our um, stacked version. So this is the, the stack from um, PixInsight, and this is the stack from, uh, sorry, this is the stack from Deep Sky Stacker, and this is the stack from um, from PixInsight. There's probably not a, a huge amount that you can tell the difference uh, on here, but the, the quality of the stack will come out uh, as you go through your post-processing um, process. Um, so um, that is what we have stacked in PixInsight using WBPP, and that is what I achieved as a final image. And you can actually see uh, just along the top here, I don't know how well that's coming across in the video. So this is one that was stacked in Deep Sky Stacker using this um, uh, stack over here that we've seen. Uh, and you can actually see some stacking artifacts uh, along the top there. Uh, they, in theory, shouldn't appear in this one because we've auto-cropped. Um, so that, if I start processing this particular image, should be auto-cropped out um, so that shouldn't be an issue at all uh, and again, but again if it is there you can just do a manual crop after really easy so now that you've got your um, final stacked image into PixInsight I have a really straightforward video for beginners to PixInsight for um, a fairly simple workflow that you can um, process your images to 
um, and produce something uh, hopefully similar or even better than what I've been able to produce here. I will leave a link to that in the description, but you can also um, click on the uh, the video on the, on the right hand side there. And um, thank you so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, then please do so. And I will see you in the next video.